What's up guys? Today I'm reviewing the 2018 Mercedes AMG S63 Cabriolet. I just want to thank the guys at H. Greg Lux in Pompano Beach for allowing me to take this beast from a Falterbach out today to review. Let's go check it out. Alright, here she is. 2018 Mercedes AMG S63 Cabriolet. This example is finished in diamond silver metallic over that amazing Bengal red over black interior. Now the Cabriolet in the name is uh, for a convertible. This is a two-door, four-seater soft top convertible. So the soft top will attract into the trunk here or in the portion between the rear seats and the trunk. And I uh, will show you that in a second. And uh, this being a 2018, it's actually a facelift of the C217 S-Class Coupe slash Cabriolet. So you get the same basic headlights here with the Swarovski crystals that are going up for the DRLs, for the turn signals I should say, and the DRLs are actually here. It is the LED intelligent light system, so you have the two projectors here that are completely active. They swivel from side to side, go up and down, they can curve, they can actually move separately. But the main part of the facelift, at least for the front, is the front bumper. So you have more pronounced lines in the front, you have larger openings for the air dams, uh, more chrome bright work, also some gloss black trim. But the most notable change on the front end is probably the Panamericana grille. So you have the, all the vertical slats here that go across. And uh, that's really the new corporate face for all the 2017 and up Mercedes Benzes or Mercedes AMGs. And uh, you've got the V8 by Turbo with 4Matic Plus badges. So 4Matic Plus means it can actually uh, send torque to any wheel depending on the situation. So torque vectoring. And um, coming around to the back. We actually have uh, not a heavy facelift for the back. You have a larger diffuser, new exhaust tips, but you also have the new taillights. They're uh, Mercedes OLED or organic LED technology. And uh, while they look pretty cool when they're off, they look truly spectacular when they're on. So I'll turn that on in a second and show you guys. And um, really not much has changed when it comes to the coupe and the Cabriolet version of the S-Class. So. Pretty similar to the S-Class sedan that I reviewed, the 2018, the facelift of the W222. You've got the same large screens there. You have the new steering wheel with the haptic feedback buttons. And as you can see, you don't need your finger to lock the car. You can lock it basically with any contact of the touch sensor here, as long as the key's in your pocket. And I just locked it with my shirt here. So just like all new AMGs with the four liter bi-turbo V8 and pretty much identical to the sedan that I drove, this has the nine speed AMG speed shift so it's not the dual clutch, it's actually the MCT or multi-clutch, so it uses wet clutches instead of a dual clutch system. So let's get a look at the engine, that 4 liter bi turbo V8. Soft closed doors of course. And here you have that 4 liter twin turbo V8 or bi-turbo and it has the hot V so the turbos are here in the valley and that actually reduces uh, turbo lag and keeps them nice and hot. So this replaces the 5.5 liter bi-turbo V8 that was in the previous generation of S-Class and actually this generation but up to 2017 so 2018 is the facelift then it got the new 4 liter. This new 4 liter produces 603 horsepower and 664 pound-feet of torque and routed through the 9-speed AMG speed shift transmission and sending all that power to the 4Matic Plus all-wheel drive system. This car is really a rocket ship for being nearly 5,000 pounds. It moves in a way that cars its size really shouldn't be able to. And uh, as far as cars in its class, it's really the only one like it. There really are no, I, I guess you could say personal luxury coupe or convertible. I know Cadillac coined that term in the 70s and 80s. But as far as cars that are this large, convertible, and there are 2 plus 2 configuration, there's really nothing else like it. And sadly, the S-Class Coupe and Cabriolet are going away next year. They're going to be replaced by the newly redesigned Mercedes SL. So it's going to become a soft top and a 2 plus 2. And it's going to have a lot of um, components from the AMG GT. So kind of sad. So we're looking at a dinosaur right now. It's a car that really isn't going to be with us any longer. But it's cool to get a chance to drive the latest and greatest version of it. And I guess you could say the final version. All right, let's close up the hood. So going around the car, you can see that it has very, very nice lines that flow all the way from front to back. Now all that's different about the design of the cabriolet or cab from the coupe 
is literally just the roof. So it would start here, go smooth all the way back here. You can see the, uh, the Burmester audio system. It's not the high end of the 3D system, it's just the base system, which calling it a base sound system is kind of crazy because it does sound amazing. But other than the car missing a roof, it is basically identical to the coupe version of the S-Class. And uh, you'll see that when the soft top is up, the general shape is the same as the metal roof. Even though it has a cloth roof, it's really the same as the metal one. All right, so now let's turn on the headlights and taillights, as well as the hazard lights. So here you can see those quad active LED projectors. And you see the Swarovski crystals at the top of each headlight are actually the turn signals. And this LED bar or line that runs through here is the daytime running light. Whereas on the sedan, you would have this same like kind of double line here would fade off of the turn signal, but the turn signal is bright enough that the DRL can stay on. And going down the side of the car, you can see you have the nice LED indicators integrated perfectly into the mirror. And you have the Mercedes-Benz logo in there. As well, a, a little touch here. You have the Mercedes-Benz that actually lights up in the side of the headlight. And you have the side marker here, nice and bright. So moving around to the back, you have the side marker here. But also, when I was talking about that OLED or organic LED, it wraps around the whole taillight. Looks like a 3D piece of art or sculpture. Really is something to behold. So the turn signals are, uh, or hazard lights are on the out, outside here. So you have basically two rows of LEDs, and then you have the OLED here. And uh, so, just like the sedan, there's multiple ways you can open the trunk. Instead of reaching all the way down here for a button, you can either swipe your foot underneath with the key in your pocket, and it opens up. And uh, you can either shut the trunk here, or you can lock it. So if you press that, it would lock and uh, close the mirrors and everything. So we'll just use that button here, close down the trunk. And you can actually push up here, and that'll open it. And uh, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but part of the 360 camera system, you can actually see the camera. So it's kind of hard to get it to do it, but uh, now the trunk's all the way up. You can actually see the uh, camera in there, the little housing where it comes out. So we'll close that and leave it alone. Close down the trunk. So I've got the key here to the S63 Cabriolet. And um, very similar to Mercedes-Benz models and Mercedes-AMG models dating back to the early 2000s and late 90s. When you actually hold the lock button or the unlock button, it'll do one of several things. It'll obviously lock the car or unlock the car, but it will fold the mirrors in, close the windows, or if it's a convertible, it would actually retract and put up the roof. So right now we're gonna hold the lock button here. So right now the roof is coming out of its little area here. See the Alcantara lined headliner. Got the cloth top, which is a nice dark red color. The windows are going up. The roof is going back. So now with the roof up and the car locked, now if I take the key and hold unlock, mirrors move out, windows start going down. The roof has begun its process of being retracted inside the car. There it goes. And then, if you hold it again, the windows will go down. Alright, so now let's take a step inside the car and check out the interior. Now, this is a pretty well optioned car. It is missing a few things, but it does have the full leather dashboard and interior. So, the, there's no open pour leather. It's all very, very small pour. And it's you got the contrast red stitching, and you have this nice red piping down here. It's really just an amazing place to sit. So it has things like the lane keep assist, the parking sensors, heads up display, the vehicle lifter, and it does not have the drive pilot or the old Distronic Plus. It, unfortunately, it only has the regular cruise control, so it actually is a deal breaker for me. But nonetheless, the car is really nicely specced. And uh, you probably heard uh, or saw that when you close the door, the seatbelt will come out to meet you, so the car will basically hand you your seatbelt. And if you open the door, it actually goes away. So closing it, as soon as the soft close does its thing, 
it'll come out. And if you ignore it for a minute or two, it'll just go away. And uh, you can see this red contrast stitching goes all the way behind these large screens here, continues around, follows the shape of the dashboard, goes all the way up here. And by the way, I have these nice diamond quilted seats with the uh, black contrast stitching and the perforation. And they are heated, they have massage, they're cooled, uh, they have active bolsters for so when you turn, the, the corresponding bolster will come out to keep your body in place. Uh, there really isn't anything this car doesn't have as far as creature comforts and just amenities and luxury features. So uh, let's go ahead and start it. Now uh, with all Mercedes AMG models, basically after 2011 or 2012, when you put the ignition on, you can go down to, we'll go to Sport Plus, which puts the suspension, which has its air suspension in the stiffest setting, so you have two settings, and opens the exhaust valves, so we'll turn off the radio right now, and uh, we'll give it a start. Now, being a convertible, the dramatic sounds you get, so the pops and the downshifts and all the revving that you normally get with a coupe or sedan is really accentuated. And you'll see what I mean when we get a startup and rev clip later. And we also do the driving videos. But for now, let's give it some revs real quick. So as you can see, it sounds really good. So here, using these haptic feedback, these little touch pads, which are very responsive and easy to use, we hit the back button here first, slide over, heads up display changes there, so if you hit that, you can actually, uh, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I can adjust the position, the brightness, and the display content. So just the speed limit, the uh, my personal favorite, the tachometer there, then you have like lap times and stuff like that. We'll do the uh, the long one here. And if you go back and we go to, let's see here, designs, this is progressive. So we have classic, which is the two gauge setup here, and you can put whatever you want in the middle. And then you have sport, which is my actual favorite and uh, displays all your boost settings, horsepower, pound feet of torque. So if we go back all the way to AMG, then it displays all these settings. And actually using the touchpad here, you can change whatever you want. So we have the G meter there, boost. We'll leave it on that. And then we go to this, this side. You can do range, navigation, date, time, all that. So right now we'll leave it on the G meter. And uh, everything reflects over here on the second screen. And for 2018, you have this very, very updated wheel, nice thin rim. You have the leather horn cover here. Leather stitch, double stitching everywhere. The nice chrome bezel. You have the two spokes coming out here with the AMG logo. The uh, black chrome Mercedes badge. All the uh, details of the steering wheel is really amazing. It feels good in the hands. You have the perforated leather. You have the racing line up here. You have the wheel mounted paddle shifters, which are fun to use. And uh, moving over here on the door panel, you have the ventilated seats, which I have on right now. Heated, you have the air scarf which will actually blow warm air onto your neck. So on a cold night when you have the top down, you can actually stay warm. Uh, you have all your memory settings and then head control, headrest control, the uh, backrest, the uh, seat cushion, and then the thigh extender. All your window controls and mirror controls. Then coming down to the middle, you have the string of pearls AC vents, which is the same as what's in the uh, sedan. Have all your AC controls here. Cigarette lighter, little ashtray storage. Another cigarette lighter, you can close that up. Has the uh, the brown burled wood, which I like uh, quite a lot. And uh, here you have all your hot keys, so you have the the shortcut to go to the seat, so the massage, navigation, radio, hazard lights, media, telephone, vehicle settings, auto start stop, dynamic control, so this lets you go from race mode, sport, sport plus, sport would just close the valves, comfort, individual. We'll leave in the sport right now. Then you have your manual mode, trash control, exhaust valves, two mode air suspension, volume control, surround view camera system, which uh, you have your 180 degree view here, your front with your top down view, 360 view, the rear view, and then the uh, top down with the rear view. So you have vehicle, connect, all your, 
basically all the same options you have it up here. It's not touchscreen. Some of the new ones are touchscreen and they use the MBUX system. This is really just a facelifted version of the pre-2017 um, command, Mercedes command. And uh, moving down here, you have the touchpad here. You can really, for navigation, you can write anything on it, like the uh, letters, and it'll recognize it. Home button, uh, next track button. Here you have the Falterbach crest that's debossed on the armrest here. You have the more red contrast stitching. And then here in the center console, along with the convertible top controls, there's actually a button to put down and up all four windows. So you have to hold it, but one button puts down and up all four windows. So it's one touch down. And uh, you have the control, the lever here to put up and down the roof. You have all your USB ports, SD card slot, um, ample amount of storage. And then you have an NFC wireless charging pad. And uh, something pretty cool is, uh, even though this car is very aerodynamically sound, and with the top down, there's really no air that's going to rush into your face. To make that a little bit better, you actually have this button here. So if you press that, the windscreen comes up, up there, or back there, I should say, and then up here. It's not really the most beautiful thing, but this visor that comes up out of the uh, top of the windshield, it will basically have air go right over the cabin and really prevent it from going into your face or too much into your hair. And uh, to turn that off, you can simply press it again and it'll lower back down. And that should really do it for the interior. If you want to see a more in-depth video, you can check out some of my other reviews that show um, more, more of the features of the command system. But uh, other than that, that's the basic rundown. Now we're going to go get some startup and rev clips, as well as some driving footage. And I'll actually also show what it looks like with the roof going up and down from the uh, side profile of the car. Let's go check it out. So right now, I'm driving the 2018 Mercedes-AMG S63 Cabriolet. I figured having the top up would make it a little quiet in here so I could talk to you guys. And uh, speaking of the top, it is, uh, it is a soft top. It's not a hard top convertible, but uh, it is lined with cashmere. So I guess that's its own form of sound deadening or whatever. But it is just as quiet in here as a S63 or even S550 coupe and not far off from the sedan. So supposedly the coupe is one of the quietest cars in the world inside and it's true I have driven uh, both the S550 and the 63 and the 65 coupe before and it's actually almost a little quieter than the sedan inside but uh, this feels just like that so I'm not sure how Mercedes did it but they always find a way to really go above and beyond when it comes to engineering and for sound and comfort. So now, now we're going to take it on the road here, got it in uh, Sport Plus and got it in uh, automatic mode for, for now. Let the uh, the nine-speed AMG speed shift transmission shift by itself. I've got the exhaust valves open right now. Let's get on it a little bit here. does have a rear wheel drive bias it uh, really is not often that the car needs to make use of the front wheel drive system but it does in corners it'll do torque vectoring so right now I'm in a corner here and it's air suspension but it's nice and stiff and when you want it to be floaty like a Cadillac and be comfortable it is but if not then uh, it's gonna be basically race car mode 
And it was weird saying that for such a wallowy coupe or a convertible of a car. It's near 5,000 pounds. But this car can really, really hold its own, especially when it comes to uh, straight line speed and cornering. And uh, it, its launch control is called Race Start. <laughs> And the brakes work very, very well. Right, so right now I'm gonna pop it down into race mode and uh, put it in manual mode. So putting it in manual mode or hitting the M on the center console will uh, have it so if I'm really, really high in the revs, the uh, gear will hold and it won't upshift for me, which is very annoying. So right now, it gives me a little shift light here. And there's a shift light up in the um, heads up display. I'm not sure if that's coming out in the camera or not. Some nice downshifts here. Some pops coming out. So now we're going to put it back into Sport Plus, take it out of manual mode here, do a little race start. Foot hard on the brake, see the launch control coming up. And uh, this car has that pulling on your face feeling where it just crushes you into the back of the seat. All that torque and the all-wheel drive of course and uh, it really it really gives you a head rush feeling right now let's go throw it into some corners so we're going to put it into race mode and back into manual mode you can't use race start when in manual mode the car needs to have full control of the transmission so now that we're in m mode manual shifting by ourselves and uh in race mode the car is in sport handling mode so it's a uh, partial traction control off not fully off um I don't believe this car has a uh, drift mode, just like, like the uh, the GT63 and the E63. It's a full-time all-wheel drive. So, I mean, throwing it into corners, it's, it's effortless. It floats, but it also sticks at the same time. There's a lot of mechanical grip. Uh, the wheels are nice and wide. They're staggered. You can really just throw it into corners, knowing it's going to come out okay on the other end. For its size, I mean, it's definitely a heavyweight, but it's a brute. I mean... There's really nothing I can't do. So it's down, drop a couple gears here. The brakes work very well, downshifting to help. time you think you're beating on it too much or you're being too rough on it, it, it only asks you for more. It's really, really a lovely car. And then you put it into comfort, the suspension softens up, the exhaust valves close, and uh, goes back to being a regular S-Class, no longer being some crazed beast on steroids. And uh, that's really what I love about this car. It does have kind of a Jekyll and Hyde personality, but even in its roughest form or, or settings, I guess, uh, it's still very much an S-Class. It's not just a like an E63 where it's very brutal and it loses the luxury essence that makes it a Mercedes-Benz. The S-Class has really always been about luxury first and then performance second. So always an S-Class first before anything else. And uh, that's really what makes this car so special. All right, guys. Well, that should do it for this review of the 2018 Mercedes-AMG S63 Cabriolet. I just want to thank H. Greg Lux in Pompano Beach, Florida for allowing me to take the car out and review it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.